I'm Tisha Bader with Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, April the 8th, 2014. Israeli and Palestinian negotiators met again yesterday in an effort to try and end the current deadlock in peace talks. U.S. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki said yesterday, at the request of the parties, the U.S. facilitated a meeting between Israeli and Palestinian negotiators this evening to continue the intensive effort to resolve their differences. She said gaps remain, but both sides are committed to narrow the gaps. Last night's meeting included lead Israeli negotiator Justice Minister Tsipi Livni, lead Palestinian negotiator Saeb Arakat, and U.S. Peace Envoy Martin Indyk. Saki had told reporters earlier yesterday in Washington that the focus now was on evaluating where things were at in the peace process and determining whether the process can move forward. Monday night's meeting follows a meeting Sunday night, also convened by the U.S. with Israeli and Palestinian negotiators. No real details have emerged from those meetings. Reuters reports that U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry is scheduled to discuss the status of the peace talks with President Barack Obama at the White House today. And Army Radio reported last night that Kerry would also be meeting with Israel's Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman, who is currently in the U.S. tomorrow. And when you see... Meanwhile, Palestinian Authority Foreign Minister Raid Malki said today that PA President Mahmoud Abbas will be looking for assurances of political and economic support from the Arab League at a meeting with the League in Cairo tomorrow. Abbas reportedly called an emergency meeting with the Arab League over concern that Israel could take steps against the PA, like economic sanctions, after the PA took unilateral actions last week in applying to 15 international bodies. As we had reported to you, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told his weekly cabinet meeting that unilateral steps from the PA would be met with unilater unilateral steps from Israel, although he didn't specify what those steps might be. In his remarks today, Malki said that Abbas would voice concern to the Arab League tomorrow that Israel might withhold tax revenues that it regularly transfers to the PA. Yesterday, Palestinian media quoted Arab League Deputy Secretary General Ahmed Ben Kheli as saying that the Palestinians had a, quote, genuine right to seek membership in the international bodies that it turned to and that Israel was to blame for the currently stalled negotiations. Six Israeli border policemen were lightly injured in clashes with Jewish settlers near the West Bank settlement of Yitzhar late last night. The clashes began after the border police units dismantled five illegally built structures. The IDF said that during the course of the demolition of those structures, hundreds of extremist settlers hurled stones at the Israeli forces, burned tires and blocked roads. Israel Radio reported that six border policemen were lightly injured in the clashes. Four of them were treated on site. Two were taken to the hospital. A military post was also attacked by the settlers who destroyed water stores and toilets at the post, which is designated for army reservists who are guarding the area. The IDF said we take a grave view of any attempt to harm the security forces who came to the area to do their job and enforce law and order. Israeli Defense Minister Moshe Ya'alon said the defense establishment would deal with the violence against Israeli military forces to the fullest extent possible. Yalon noted that there was an extremist element in the settlement of Itzhar, which unfairly put a stain on the, on the reputation of all Israeli settlers in Judea and Samaria. Yalon said in Itzhar there are violent factions, but not all of the residents are violent. He said we won't stand for factions that ultimately hurt the settlement enterprise, raise a hand against any element of the IDF, the border police, the Israel police or civil administrators. He said the law applies to every citizen of Israel and these violent actions we will deal with in any way necessary. As we reported to you yesterday, earlier this week, the tires of an IDF colonel's jeep were slashed in the settlement and a Jewish teen from Yitzhar was arrested. The vandalism on the jeep, which happened several times over the last few months, was also seen as an act of protest against the IDF for its policies regarding the settlement. Some residents of Yitzhar, which is considered one of the more ideologically extreme, saw the demolition by the border police last night as collective punishment against them. Representatives from the settlement said that while they disagreed with the, quote, total destruction of IDF 
military posts last night. The demolition of the illegal structures was unfair and an act of revenge on the part of the IDF for the actions of a few individuals, apparently referring to the recent anti-IDF vandalism there. The Washington Post reports that Jewish American government contractor Alan Gross, who has been imprisoned in Cuba for over four years, has now begun a hunger strike. Gross's lawyers said today that Gross had begun the hunger strike last week to protest his treatment by both the Cuban and U.S. governments. In a statement given to his legal team over the phone, Gross is cited as saying, I am fasting to object to mistruths, deceptions, and inaction by both governments, not only regarding their shared responsibility for my arbitrary detention, but also because of the lack of any reasonable or valid effort to resolve this shameful ordeal. Gross, who is 64 and said to be in poor health, has reportedly already lost over 100 pounds since he was arrested in Cuba in 2009 for setting up computer and internet access for the Jewish community there. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison for crimes against the state. The American Jewish Committee expressed its concern following elections in Hungary this past Sunday, where the far-right Jobbik party gained in power. As we reported to you yesterday, the party, which is often called anti-Semitic and racist, won 20.6% of the vote in the elections, a rise from 16% four years ago. The AJC said the increase in voter support for the radical party was deeply worrisome. AJC Executive Director David Harris said when more than one in five voters in Hungary, a NATO and EU member, opts for an unabashedly extremist party, alarm bells should be going off. President of the Federation of Hungarian Jewish Communities, Andreas Heisler, told the Jerusalem Post that the election results were very concerning. But he was somewhat reassured by the fact that Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban still held a large majority in the country and should not need the help or support of a party like Jobbik. Heisler did note, however, that Jobbik is now the strongest radical party in Europe. Jobbik is Hungary's third largest political party. It will now have 23 seats in the 199-seat parliament. With the Passover holiday less than a week away, the Jewish Council for Public Affairs, together with Mazon, a Jewish response to hunger, will host members of Congress, administration officials, and other national faith, anti-hunger, and anti-poverty leaders for the National Hunger Seder. That's coming up tomorrow at the U.S. Capitol Visitor Center. The National Hunger Seder is an adaptation of the traditional Passover Seder, which stresses the moral imperative to end hunger in America. This year's Hunger Seders are placing special emphasis on raising awareness for the alarming rise in hunger faced by senior citizens. Tomorrow's event is part of the 6th Annual Mazon JCPA Hunger Seder Mobilization, which includes more than 20 Hunger Seder events taking place in communities across the country. And speaking of Passover, some special pre-holiday programming is included in tonight's Shalom TV programming, Tuesday, April the 8th. At 7 o'clock from the Aleph Bet, Passover focuses on the four questions. And then at 7.45, Seder memories are shared by actor Jeff Goldblum, comedian Larry Miller, Israeli actress Noah Tishby, and others. Later tonight, one of the greatest scholars of Islam, Bernard Lewis, joins Mark Golub on L'Chaim at 9.00 where he talks about his own Jewish identity and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's all coming up tonight here on Shalom TV and ShalomTV.com. And that's Shalom TV's news update for Tuesday, April the 8th, 2014. I'm Tisha Bader.